Hello, everyone, and thanks for listening. If you are listening, um, well, I'm going to start off right away by saying I will read this headline here that I put up. It's It says, Black leaders are almost always looked at as males dominating the political talks in the black community. Women are in the black community as well. And women should have a voice. Let me read it again. Black leaders are almost looked at as males dominating the black talks in the black community. Women are in the black community too. And women should have a voice. And so I'm going to put my take in on how I feel about some of the issues in the black community. So what I've been seeing, and I'm, I don't know if other people have witnessed this, and maybe they have, and they don't talk about it enough, but a lot of times what we almost always hear about is when it comes to black political issues, the males usually take the forefront, which is a good thing. I'm not going to say anything against that, that that's bad. I'm not saying anything against it to say that males shouldn't speak out for black rights. They should. But there should be more of it and there should also be a voice for other people in the black community who are just as influential as black males are. And so what I do find problematic is when you have even black women themselves will bash other black females for being prolific and for being outspoken in the black community if they have a difference of belief or opinion about political issues. And I think it's unfair because there are black women who have strong voices and have strong opinions and have strong ideas that are just as unique and just as forthright as anyone else who comes up with ideas and different innovative and creative ideas to bring forth unity and community in the black population or a black class of people who are so-called conscious individuals. So I see that YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and some of these other social media websites have become extremely prolific are extremely uh, useful in people getting their voice and information across. So you see all the famous faces of black male leaders, but also you need to see the famous faces and the real influential people that are female black leaders in the black community and they should have voice and they should be able to be recognized as black leaders as well. Some will look at them as that or they'll just say that wife or that woman or that um, influential woman but never the black female leader and if it is a black female leader it's always going back to Harriet Tubman days but there are women that are influential and impact the black community on a better note than just being in the kitchen and being the nurturers and having babies and being a wife and being just a help meet for a black male. And so it's always taught to black women to be loyal to their mates. But we're seeing a change in generation, a change in time, a change in beliefs, and there's lots of different opinions and different beliefs of different individuals that are happening ever so rapidly. And so some people are okay with this and they're versatile while others are not versatile to change or they are just stuck in the 60s and the 70s and they don't want to branch out to new innovative creative ideas or maybe these things were already there. It's just that these individuals never had a voice or a say so in issues and that is the reason why you have so many people who feel like they need to come out and say what they need to say in regard to black females. Black females have gone through the forefront with the black males on black issues 
if it's police brutality, if it has to do with single mothers and domestic violence, if it has to do with um, black issues that plague the black community, if it's AIDS, if it's being uh, without the father or your brother or someone that gets locked up in prison and then they wind up, you know, gone away from their their family, a spouse who's locked up. So we oftentimes see black women as being downtrodden. They have no voice. They have a lot of children. They're either darn near homeless or they're single with kids and they can barely get by and make ends meet. And they always seem to have to need a male to lead the household. Sometimes some women find it okay to have a mate while others find it problematic if you have someone that is on drugs or they're always you know involved in street life and here you're a woman and you can speak for yourself you can go out and get a job you can make money and you can live you may not be rich but you can live at least halfway decent to a point to where you can stand on your own two feet. You don't necessarily need a male leading you in those areas. But some women are so loyal that they'll follow that male even into homelessness where they'll get evicted from an apartment or they'll get evicted from their homes and they wind up on the street homeless and then they fall down the same rabbit hole of getting involved in drugs or prostitution or they're dealing with domestic violence a lot of times and they end up in uh, homeless shelters a lot of times they want to see women like this in the black community where you're just silent you're a homemaker and you're not made to be forceful with your voice and you're supposed to be uh, docile and the only people can speak out are black males and if it is has to do with feminism you shouldn't be attached to that it's a white woman's feminism and it, there's no other feminism that involves that is a lie that is a big fat lie there is black feminism and feminism is on different planes different levels there is not one feminism there is a dominant feminist belief that where there's white women who lead the feminist movement and that is what most collectively people think especially in the black community who disagree with feminism altogether they feel as though feminism is pulling women away from males not necessarily so there are a lot of strong black males but there are also a lot of strong black females that are leaders in the black community but a lot of times they're silent or they're not looked at or viewed at as being a leadership they're viewed negatively or derogatory or they're looked at as criminals or deviants or they're viewed in a way where they're put in prison and locked away or thrown away or they don't have a voice and so we know some of these prolific leaders in the black community that are female take for instance we have Rosa Parks she is prolific and she is very influential in the black community but she's viewed more as a more passive type of black female so which leads me into this article I'm going to talk about three prolific women in the black community, Elaine Brown, Angela Davis, and Kathleen Cleaver. And I came across an article that I thought was very influential about these three women because they were involved, all three, in the Black Panther Party movement. So when I read about Elaine Brown, Elaine Brown, she rose up the ranks in the Black Panther organization, later became the first woman to head the organization dominated by men. 
At the time she became a member, she chaired the organization from 1974 to 1977. Before gaining prominent position as chairwoman, she worked as an editor of the party paper. She also helped organize the free breakfast program in L.A. Brown attended an elementary school in Philadelphia that was predominantly white, providing a stark contrast from the black neighborhoods that she grew up in. Following the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and the imprisonment of Panther leader Eldridge Cleaver Brown attended her first Black Panther Party meeting. In a memoir, she describes what is like to be what it is like to be a Black Panther Party person which often appealed to the young urban black males and how her membership it conflicted with the feminist movement i was denounced from some of the women's groups because the question of feminism seemed to not allow for this element this return in return to the black community of the black male she wrote brown authored a taste of power where she described her experience and the journey as a panther. Today, Brown continues her activism advocating for criminal and juvenile justice reform, as well as prison reform. And so I'm going to go on to talk about Angela Davis. Most people know about Angela Davis. Um, but Angela Davis was also in the Black Panther Party movement. She was a prominent leader, and she ultimately left after battling with the chauvinists and misogyny within that party. Davis was born in the Dynamite Hill area of Birmingham, Alabama, which was nicknamed that because of Ku Klux Klan bombing the black middle class homes in that neighborhood. She was compelled to join the civil rights movement after 1963 after four girls died in the bombing of the Baptist Church in her hometown. By 1967, she began to be a part of the Black Power Movement and the Black Party Panther um, Movement. At the same time, she was pursuing an MA at a university at San Diego and later joined the American Communist Party. And Davis aligned herself with the left, which hindered her teaching career and dismissed her from the assistant professorship at the University of California of LA, which is UCLA, in 1969. And she soon pursued um, or pursued prison reform advocacy leading initiatives to free black prisoners and the black panthers the journey provide a tumultuous situation for davis as she was the prime suspect of a trial alleging that she assisted the black panther parties to break out of jail after guns were found registered in her name davis was soon placed on the fbi's most wanted list the incident led to a great campaign to free angela davis and she was eventually acquitted of all her charges ronald reagan at the time was the governor of the california state and he called to prevent davis from teaching in the university in the state's universities and she eventually became a lecturer at san francisco state university in 1977 today davis is the professor emeritus of history of consciousness and feminist studies at the university of california in santa cruz she continues to work as an activist and a scholar so we also have a kathleen cleaver who was married to a Black Panther Party member and she also was a member a national communications secretary and she helped organize the campaign to release the party leader Huey P Newton from prison before her involvement in the party she attended a desegregated Quaker boarding school and later dropped out of college to move to New York City and she became a full-time worker in the student nonviolent coordinating committee a pipeline for the civil rights movement Cleaver also met her husband Eldridge Cleaver in the committee and married him soon after they both joined the party movement and during her time she joined the foreign services traveled to countries like Sierra Leone and India Cleaver Cleaver lay, later fled to Mexico and later to Algeria. She describes her journey escaping to Algeria, leaving her marriage and being under constant surveillance in her memoir, Memoirs of Love and War. 
1984, Cleaver graduated with a BA in history from Yale and received a JD uh, jurisprudence, uh, I, I believe. I'm not sure if that's a JD from Yale Law School in 1989. So then she became an associate at the law firm of Kravath, Swain, and Moore, and later clerked for a late judge, Judge A. Leon Higginbotham of the United States Courts of Appeals for the Third Circuit in Philadelphia. In 93, she served on the Georgia Supreme Court Commission of Racial Ethnic Bias in the Courts, and she also spent more than 30 years working to free imprisoned freedom fighters, including Geronimo Pratt and Mumia Abu-Jamal. From 1999 to 2003, Cleaver co-founded and produced the initial international Black Panther Film Festival based in Harlem and is currently a senior lecturer at the Emory Law School. We hope that these particular leaders continue to inspire women to be agents of change in their communities and work for justice and equality for all. So it also, it's this is coming from um, uh, writings from uh, that are titled Makers Break Every Ceiling. So I thought it was interesting because it really it's entitled get to know these three fearless female leaders from the black panther party movement and so i believe that women are underestimated we're not really talked about it's always looked at as we have to be silent and we have to take the background and we're never in the forefront on political issues involving black problems when it's black women that are speaking, we are made to feel like we have to be dominated by males or we have to be dominated by white females. And so, you know, when it comes to feminism, so this is where I'm coming at with the feminism thing. Feminist movement is not just about white women. There are black women who are involved in the feminist movement, but it is from a whole nother perspective than what people know. So I have being one myself, I'm speaking for myself. Now, anybody else could say something derogatory. They could say some hateful comments. They could say, oh, we're against feminism. Oh, that's, 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 a, that's for lesbians or that's for women who hate males. You can believe whatever you want to believe, but that's not true. Everybody's uh, viewpoints are a whole together different perspective than what people uh, traditionally believed. So... I feel like a lot of that is stereotypes and myths just like any other group and like I'm gonna say there are a lot of agendas out there what I've noticed on YouTube especially there's been a lot of women bashing and um, women are bashed to the fullest extent and a lot of times the hatred that black community gets and when you see black um, males being gunned down and being shot and killed and black boys being gunned down being shot and killed and then there's acquittals after acquittals acquittals there's a mother there's a sister there's a cousin there's a niece there's a auntie there's a, a wife there's someone grieving and it's a black female and she's fighting she's going to court she's trying to figure out ways to raise bail money she's trying to figure out ways to support her son or her cousin or her brother or she's trying to figure out how to feed her family she's trying to figure out how to go work if she has to work every day of her life until she can no longer work physically she's trying to do everything in her power and that's all about black feminism a hundred percent in my eyes and I am one of them there is no excuse for all this bashing all the the, the venom that is spewed online towards black females and there are other black females who go against other black females online constantly about oh we don't like you because you you're too tomboyish or we don't like you because you act too independent it, it, it's it's a manless situation or you're you're manless or you're you're taking us away from our males no it's the opposite i'm fighting for black people and that doesn't mean just black females that doesn't mean just one entity it means all black people for all the rights of black people and for all the rights of good people not just black people as well so there's a lot of misconstrued um 
information that is being thrown hither and there about on social media that takes away from the the solidness and the strength of black females who are strong and who lead their households and so i just think it's really sad that we have people that persist online to spew so much hatred and so much confusion and so many stereotypes it's atrocious and it's an epidemic that has to be stopped so it may not be completely stopped but it can be explained to the fullest extent to where people understand that not all agendas are the right agendas for everyone and not all agendas fit the same persona that people always traditionally viewed them as so I, I speaking for myself I'm a black feminist I'm a woman that he leads my household I, I work and I'm a strong independent woman um, I have a channel I have nothing to hide I may be watched but there's no fear in, in having to be afraid of me I, um, I have a legitimate uh, work uh, environment and I you know I strive for independence. I strive for fluentness, and uh, I love to learn new ideas and be creative and innovative within myself. I don't need some guy who he has no direction in his life, and all he wants to do is dominate females for only a sexual purpose, with no positive purpose of unity and and building together whatsoever. So I do not find that attractive what whatsoever so I just wanted to put that out there because there's so much information that is being misconstrued and thrown about and it's terrible and that is the reason why I feel like a lot of black women fall short because they don't feel like that they can lead themselves and be attractive and be powerful I think is just as attractive as being you know you know this female that always concerns herself with her hair and her nails and, and what kind of clothes she's wearing how she smells and whatnot but you should also concern yourself with your mind so I also left out another young woman who was in the video I've read some of her books um, in feminist thought it's belled hooks and you might have seen it like later in the the later uh earlier earlier portion of this video clip but um a lot of what she says i really 100 percent agree with um there's some people that refute some of the, the ideas that she comes out with a lot of it is very woman centered and i believe there should be safe spaces for women to talk and to to talk about political issues especially women who want to talk about black women issues because it is different it is a, another experience and we are looked at as not only being uh, a problematic because of being female but also being black females who have a mind to speak for themselves and who have went through some of the forefronts of the struggles of the black political issues that we are seeing today even from the past to present so I thought these were good uh, points to bring out but um, if you do have any comments leave your comments within a, a, a an educated way uh, a way where it, it it's not bashing it's not harmful but I know there are going to be some people that are very contrary because they have nothing in their heart but hate but this is my point of view on the issues but thanks for listening and have a wonderful evening